Hello, my name is Trooper Larry Norman. I'm a state trooper with uh, the state of Oklahoma and I'm assigned to uh, one of our special uh, emphasis uh, uh, Troop W units. Uh, we work uh, the waterways of the state, all the state waterways in Oklahoma and, and others along with that. Um, Gary has asked me, he's caught me just as I was starting to get in the boat here on Fort Gibson Lake. I'm assigned to Fort Gibson and also parts of the navigation system out of Muskogee. To kind of give you a little educational update, something really quick and try to keep it as simple as I possibly can to help you to remember some of the requirements that we look for if, uh, if you're going to be out boating, fishing or um, any kind of recreational sport in a boat. You may run into one of us and we may ask that to, uh, uh, to do a boarding inspection on your boat, do a little safety inspection that we do. And uh, there's no need to be nervous about that. And then naturally, if you know what you need, we'll uh, it just go a little bit easier. And, and uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'll probably ask you for some form of ID identification if you have that it makes uh, the job a little easier to get your basic information and the first forms that we're going to ask for whether in your bass boat or on your jet ski or in your ski boat or whatever the, the case may be your pontoon recreation boat of any kind is we're going to ask for your uh, state of Oklahoma uh, vessel registration form and uh, that comes from your Oklahoma Tax Commission. Usually when you go in and buy your, your state decal stickers that goes on the side of your boat, they'll give you these forms that are updated for that year. What we need to see is we need to see one form on the, the vessel, on your boat, especially uh, uh, it's required that you have that registered. And uh, you would have one form on your boat. As of now, that would be a June of 2010 form or 11 or 12, depends on if you buy a one year, two year, or three year registration. And also if you have a motor that's uh, 10 horsepower or greater, we're going to ask to see your registration uh, certificate on that motor because in the state of Oklahoma it has to be registered, anything over 10 horsepower. So um, well, that's the two things that we're going to ask for and it is required that you be able to produce those on your vessel at that point. And we're going we're gonna to take a look at that and make sure that they are, in date, they are dated and uh, readable. And that's one of the, the greatest things is learning in some way of trying to keep them dry before uh, you have to produce them. Um, if you have a, a motor uh, that's an inboard or that uh, is part of the vessel, it's an inboard vessel or it's a jet ski, naturally you wouldn't have to produce a registration form on that, that motor, just on the vessel itself. The second thing that we're going to ask you for to take a look at is if your numbers are properly displayed. And we're going to have a little segment there to show you exactly how those numbers are supposed to go on the sides of your vessel and uh, explain that. Those numbers by state law have to be block lettering. They have to be a contrasting color of your vessel against your vessel so they'll stand out. And uh, they have to be three inches high and a half inch wide. And those numbers also have to go in a group of three. Uh, the OK number is one group and then you'll be assigned four numbers that will be your second group and two alphabetic letters which will be your third group. Those numbers go as high above the waterline as practical and as far forward on the bow as practical. I think we're going to show you a picture of a perfect example of, of the way the state wants to see, see those on your vessel. Uh, we, uh, from that point, we're going to uh, try to inspect your Life jackets, your PFDs as we refer to them, your personal flotation devices. The law requires that you have one uh, wearable life jacket for each person that's on your vessel at that time. And that vessel, I've brought a kind of an example of a PFD or a life jacket. Yours may be a little different than this. But that vessel has to, that jacket has to be U.S. Coast Guard approved. You can look on the back of your PFD and see if that has a U.S. Coast Guard number on it. And it has to list that it is a safety uh, life-saving device before we recognize it as a life-saving device. So each person on board your vessel must be able to produce one of these. Along with that, these have to be in good shape, not ripped or tore. They have to be the proper size, the proper fit for the intended wearer. 
and uh, they have to be what we call readily accessible. In other words, you should be able to get to this vest with uh, the least amount of effort and uh, Preferably not have them in a locked compartment or some, some place that would hinder you from retrieving this uh, life jacket if, if you had to have it. Uh, we get a lot of questions about who should wear a life jacket. Actually, the law states that anyone under 13 years of age must have one of these on unless uh, the vessel's setting still. But if that vessel's underway or begins to move forward, uh, it's required that uh, anyone under 13 years of age on your vessel be wearing a properly fitted uh, U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket. Jet skis naturally, uh, trying to cover a lot of information with just a little bit of time. A jet ski, anyone on a jet ski must be uh, wearing an approved U.S. Coast Guard PFD or personal flotation device or life jacket. Also, anybody being towed by a vessel, whether it's skiing, kneeboarding, or whatever manner of being towed, must have a, a personal flotation uh, device on. So that's some of the things we look for. Also, if you have a vessel that's 16 foot or over, we're going to ask for one other piece of life-saving equipment on that vessel. And usually we refer to that as a throwable device. And this is one form of throw throwable devices. There are several. Some of them are just a hard ring. This is the most common. These can be picked up at just about any place. It's uh, You're required to have one of these on board along with your PFDs. This does not substitute for a personal flotation device, nor does your PFD substitute for a throwable device. So we're going to look for at least one of these on board, probably one. For most boats, that's going to be sufficient. And it also will say on it in little white lettering somewhere on there, U.S. Coast Guard approved. We're going to look to make sure this is in good working order. It's in good shape, no rips or tears, and all the straps are in good shape for you there. <clears throat> Another item we're going to ask you for is a fire extinguisher. And on that fire extinguisher, it depends on what size of vessel. You can check your regulations to show you what size fire extinguisher for what size vessel you have. But for the most part, most fishermen and just basic skiers with just the regular size, normal size boats are going to be required to have one B1 fire extinguisher. The B uh, tells you the type of fire extinguisher and the type of fires that it will extinguish electrical gasoline fires of that nature and the one tells you what size. Uh, B1 is the most common size that you're going to need. Actually this boat here, uh, Proline, it's required to have one B1, a 22 foot Proline. So you're probably going to be in that category. You might check your regulations on that. We're going to look to see that that is got a B rating on it, that it is charged and all the pins and safety pins are attached and it's in good order and uh, still appears to have its pressure and uh, we're going to look at that and make sure it is a B which stands for U.S. Coast Guard approved just like the life jackets and that it at least a size one to fit your boat or whatever size that you're required to have. So we're going to check that make sure that you have it. Any boat that's running gasoline, alcohol, or any kind of uh, uh, fluid like uh, that nature uh, is required to have a fire extinguisher on it. The only way that you're not required to have a fire extinguisher is if you're just not running a gasoline engine.